Jeremy Loopmaster Loops. Good morning, man. <laughs> Good morning. Hey. We were just talking to Jeremy just before we went uh, on air, and he was like, oh, these early mornings are not easy for me. And I'm like, you're a musician. He's like, no, musicians do the late nights better than the early mornings. Mm, we're the late night hustlers. Mm-hmm. We, uh, we have to, yeah, we play shows at 11 o'clock that go on till one, mm. and then you have a couple of post drinks, and you go to bed at three, and you wake up the next day at 11. That's kind of what most musicians yeah, do. Yeah, it's always hard to get rock stars onto mm. breakfast radio. Mm. Especially headliners and main acts uh-huh. who are mm. the last ones on stage. Uh-huh. Yeah, in, your, in the earlier days of your career, you um, you say yes to a lot of a lot of the early morning stuff because you need to. And then like <laughs> as, <laughs> as, yeah, as you progress, you're like, ah, the morning... Ex- Espresso. Oh. <laughs> how, how early are you guys starting again? <laughs> no, you need to be on set and hair and makeup at 4 a.m. Oh, no, I'm so busy that day. There's something else that came yeah. up. You go, well, oh, I don't really need it in my career right for, now. <clears throat> for you guys and for KFM, you guys oh. have always been massive supporters and it's the one radio station. I was like, let's go. I can do this. Oh, so brother. happy I that can you do this. and your man bun showed up oh. this morning. Yes. I know. Just sounding, for us. Sounding like such a diva. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you are quintessentially Cape Town, though. Yeah, you think it's maybe just a Cape Town thing. It has nothing to do with the music. That's possible. <laughs> so you've been hanging out in some uh, some decent company, I hear. Hanging yes. out with Mr. Ed Sheeran. How does that come about? Oh, he just wouldn't leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> just hit you up in the DMs. <laughs> he just wants you to write some songs for him. Eh? Yeah, I don't know what it is. He's, he's clearly fanboying. And... But he likes South Africans, though. He's really got this this love for South Africans. Whenever he's on stage, he tells a story about how he used to busk back in the day in London. And there was a time in the early 2000s when there was a lot of South Africans going on that two-year holiday visa okay. in the UK. Right. And um, he would just go and he would, he would busk, you know, on the streets. Interesting. And then... Um, you to get hired by these South Africans. He was nobody. Yeah. To come and play at their house parties. That and sounds then, yeah. It sounds a lot like what I was doing. Were you doing that in London as well? No, but I was. <coughs> I was busking. I was busking and. Uh, in Constantia. <laughs> definitely not in Constantia. <laughs> no, I was. You look like the biscuit mill type. I was busking at the biscuit mill and yeah. places like that, and uh, trying to make ends meet, and also getting hired every now and then by South Africans. So it sounds like we were doing similar things, but we were both traveling around with our loop pedals. That was like a, a staple yeah. of how we started, and I think along with the looping comes like a certain um, style of making music which is often incorporating an audience and it's it's like working with people you know and i think that's probably what ed and i had in common we um we came up in similar ways like i played a lot and that was a big part of my identity it was uh it wasn't like i'd written a hit song and that blew up on the radio and then you have to figure out how to become a live musician Mm. i was like cut from the cloth of go and play everywhere and figure out how to work with the awkward energies of live performing uh, Mm. from the bottom and uh, and work my way up to selling out these massive venues and being able to do it and and I think that you know when you see Ed play live you you can see that same comfortability he has with people and Mm. uh, live show and he was super when we first met he was so interested in what I'd done he was like um, so where did you meet first we met he invited me to come and watch his show here when he was in Cape Town um, when playing at the stadium. <clears throat> and then he invited me to his after party, which was somewhere down the road here. And some massive bodyguard in a you know, black car picked me up at a non-disclosed oh. location. And I got like <laughs> taken, you know, he was like, no one's allowed to know where you're going. It's the after party. And it was just this lovely little like small gathering of I think his like close friends and passenger. The guy who was opening for him at the time was there. And But um, Ed and I just cracked it all. We just sat in the corner and... Um, he really, he basically blew off the whole after party to come and just drink with me and quiz me about all these things. He, I think he was very interested in um, specifically like some of the technical parts of my looping setup and how I was looping with the band. And his, I think he was telling me like, he's been wanting to be playing music with a band for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, and been, he's, he's struggled to figure out how to incorporate a band into his looping setup, which is why he still has uh, to this day always performed solo. Um, well, I can see, because when I watched him, I, after a while, I was like, dude, I'd actually like to hear a band. And I'm tired of hearing a guitar when you go. 
Yes. Do that eight times and then it loops. I'm like, I want to hear a real drum now, Ed. Come on. I like, can't you afford a band? What's yeah. the deal? Well, that, yeah. So interestingly enough, there's there's a, there's a lot of technical problems that come with looping because uh, you're you're in a certain time yourself. You're looping in like synced to your loop pedal clock. Mm. And it means that it's very tough for like a drummer. Normally your drummer is keeping time. Mm. But when mm. you're looping, your loop pedal is keeping time and everyone else has to, it's called like who's master and slave. They're all slave to the master loop pedal. Mm. Um, and that's a problem. Like, so you, there's workarounds and there's ways you get around it. And he was just quizzing me. And I was like, whoa, stop asking me such a technical. <laughs> like, like, don't I, you know this stuff? I, didn't, yeah, I, didn't, Sheeran. I didn't come here to tell you my trade secrets. <laughs> 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 this came from Margarita. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it came, came for a damn drink. Um, no, but he was very, and I think what I liked about him as well is that like he was so curious, you know, and I mean, he's got like all the money and fame in the world and he's, really i think he's at the you know he's at the top of the pile isn't he he's probably the biggest yeah. art, single artist in the world yeah and um and he was obsessed with asking me uh, all sorts of kind of technical questions but also he was very interested in like how does a south african uh, that made music here like in this small country in the grand scheme of things like how did you sell out the brixton academy in london um I think he's really struggled to fathom that because in the UK, the Brixton Academy is one of the biggest, like notorious venues, the one that all the artists want to sell out at some stage mm. in their career. But most of them never get there. And yeah. even artists that are household names in the UK might not still be able to sell out that venue because it, it just takes a lot of like people to fill it in. I, he was just blown away. So he was asking, where did you play before that? And what was the place you, he said, did you play the Roundhouse? And I said, yeah, we sold out the Roundhouse in 2018. Oh, wow. So, and what, did you play the Electric Ballroom before then? And I was like, that's just cool. He knows, mm. he, he understands the he circuit. He knows the circuit, yeah. He knows like how to get there. And I thought that would have been like a distant memory for him, but it mm. absolutely wasn't. But what, what he also like uh, probably fails to realize is that there is a ton of South Africans there and as soon as a South African comes over to London, boom, it's gone. Mm. It's uh, the tickets are gone. Have you found that to be the case? No, my. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I Being wish that South was. Being a South African <laughs> isn't enough, Darren. <laughs> I really Come wish on. that was the case. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's South Africans abroad are. I mean, while they are, they've always. I'm not, you know, saying playing it down. Mm -hmm. The South Africans have been a, a massive uh, stronghold and a part of the contingent for for all these years. Wherever we go in the world, they're rocking up. But we're also pretty cheap. Like it's we're not the guys to, we you know I'm 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 always like looking where I'm spending my money. You like mm -hmm. the, you can't rely on South Africans to fill up five thousand seater venues overseas. Yeah, not yeah. at all. Um, they make up maybe ten percent of who comes to those shows. We've had all of our big um, breakout moments there in the UK by playing on the festival circuit reaching new audiences and doubling down on those people and yeah cultivating this a similar kind of cult following that we did here in south africa mm. and just trying to replicate that over there we, you need absolutely you need the local fans well listen i want to uh, chat some more to you but i want to get your new song on mm -hmm. yeah let's do that i got sent it about two weeks ago and uh after about 45 seconds in i sent a message saying this is the best song Jeremy Loops has ever oh, done. Oh, stop it. <laughs> really and was. Darren doesn't say those stop kinds it. of things lightly. Yeah, because I don't. It's, it's his name on the chopping board. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> mm. Well, I, yeah, it's a, you know, it was, I was writing with some of the best. Obviously, I wrote the song with Ed Sheeran and Steve Mack and this guy, Johnny McDade. Those are, it was like the powerhouse of people to write a song with. So the knowledge in that room about like melody and just the simplicity of the song as well, like really shines, I think. Um, because I often wonder when you guys sit and write a song, and I mean, like Ed has written songs, he's written so many songs that have become pop hits that he didn't perform, mm. that you wouldn't know, mm. you know? Like, because oftentimes when you actually look at the lyrics, a lot of it is just, it's garbage. It doesn't make sense. Like, tell me if you, if you recognize this song. This was one of the biggest hits in the world, if not the biggest hit at the time. Okay. Homegrown alligator. See you later. Got to hit the road. <laughs> Got to hit the road. The sun has changed in the atmosphere. Architecture. Unfamiliar. Uh, I, I can get used to this. No, man. This guy must Time flies by in the yellow and green. Stick around and you'll you see what, what I mean. I mean. <laughs> There's a mountain top that I'm dreaming of if you need me. You know where I'll be. I'll be riding shotgun, shotgun yeah. underneath the hot sun. <laughs> 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 
I am um, the south of the equator. Never oh, gated. Keep going. Okay. Got to hit the road. Got to hit. Like, look at this. Deep sea diving round the clock. Bikini bottoms, larger tops. I could get used to this. Mm. There's a difference it's, when yeah. Ed Sheeran executes and when Darren Simpson does an Ed Sheeran spoken word version. But wait, but, that, but, that, you that see, it doesn't translate though. I had, so, but that's obviously George Israel, right? Yes. So, and what? So, uh, Ed was a co-writer on that song. Was he really? Well, no, I'm asking you. No, I don't oh. know. Oh, you're just saying another song. <laughs> just a just a song that was a huge hit. That that's the, just another hit that was terrible in your yeah lyrically. And I loved the song. It was my favorite song. Yeah, yeah. See, it's a problem. Yeah, I mean, um, George Israel. And with that song, notably, um, what happened was he had released, I, I know this because I worked on one of the songs off my album with um, Cam Blackwood, who's the producer of, of that song. Mm. Um, and he's the producer of a number of um, big hits of big hits of George Ezra. Okay. And so we worked on um, my song Postcards, which came mm. out last year. Yeah. He was the producer of Postcards. And so we worked back and forth. It's over all so incestuous, Jeremy. Over Zoom. <laughs> yeah, because this is what I wonder. Like, like you guys, you're sitting there with Ed. All right, Ed. Let me try this. Homegrown alligator. No. See you later. Stop bringing oh. George Isma's <laughs> lyrics. That is good. That is good. No, George was on his own when he wrote this. No, I'll tell you this. So the the story from Cam is that George had written this album. And there was a lot of good stuff on that album. He is a great songwriter. We know he's mm. put out songs like that Budapest song. And, yeah, yeah. You know, like he can write. But the label weren't happy with what he had sent, he delivered. And they said, we, there's nothing, we don't see the radio hit. Like, where is the obvious hit? Yeah. And he had, it was at the last hour, he had zero time left. And he was, I think, like probably having an ego blow from, you know, being told there was nothing there that they could work. And so he went and wrote that song in what, you know, the story goes in two hours. Because everybody was leaving and he said, hey, guys, mm. see you later, alligator. It was like that. I and think was like, like, oh, hold on. <laughs> and I don't know. If, pressure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I don't know if that's like testament to like the way we all listen to music and how little we care sometimes about the lyrics mm, yeah. or whether that's just like, oh, I don't know. Well, they say you only actually truly ladies listen to lyrics more than men. Men listen to the melody. Ladies listen to the lyrics. Yeah. But if you are really deep in your feelings, that's the time when men will actually listen to lyrics. Right. Okay. Every yeah. now and then, just when yeah. they're heartbroken or something. Well, your new song. Let's uh, bump it on. Let's disconnect it from that George <laughs> song entirely. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it its own space. This is South Africa's Jeremy Loops. <laughs> yes. What do you think? Let us know now on our WhatsApp telephone over two nine four five zero nine four zero. Do you need to tell us anything before we listen to this, or should we just throw it on? Well, I'm just going to stay with what you said. You, you're, you're claiming that you feel mm. after two weeks of listening to the song that this is the best song I've ever written. I've, that's the first real compliment I've got about the song. So I'm just going to live Jeremy. with that. Jeremy. Mm -hmm. And the best thing about you, Jeremy, is not only do you do the infectious music that we play on the radio, you're an incredible live performer and people rush to see your shows. Where can South Africans see you as soon as possible? So we have a whole, um, thank you, that's very kind. We mm. have a whole bunch of shows coming up in June. And I wish I was prepared enough to have those dates on me, but I, I do not. But one is uh, under the bridge there by the <laughs> yeah. stadium. There's the other one is uh, there on the promenade. I think but Celeste behind me in the other room is scrambling to find me some dates. But uh, we are playing a big show in Cape Town, kind of like an album launch. The album is coming um, finally, that's oh. also big news. Like, mm. this is the first of many songs off an album, which has taken me years to make thanks to COVID. Um, mm -hmm. It was almost ready before the lockdown. We were about to release it, and then everything got derailed. And it was just so difficult to let go of a whole bunch of songs in an environment where I knew I wasn't going to be able to perform them. And like you say, that's a huge part of what I do. Yeah. I want to be out there. I want to play these songs. And so what happened is I actually released a bunch of the songs from the record over lockdown, like Mortal Man, Postcards, Till I Found You, this Ladysmith, Black Mombazo uh, song, This Town. Mm -hmm. These are all songs that were on the album. And as a result of releasing them, I had to write new songs <laughs> to replace them. And so, and you never just write a few songs. Like when you're writing songs to replace songs for an album you end up writing loads and whittling it down i needed four more and so the nice thing about this album is that it's ended up having all these new songs as well okay. and it comes out in july the, the full album and we'll be doing a bunch of shows in june leading up to it one in cape town big show in cape town i think at this 
I'm not even going to say the dates. I don't know. Mm. People will find them. I will be it's mentioning early them for it's on social early. media. <laughs> Just yeah. stay close. Follow and, the loops. Uh, follow the loops. <laughs> I want to see you, though. Mm. I want to see you, 20,000 people, sunset on Camps Bay Beach. <sighs> Let's I set know that we, up. We left to phone Alan Windy for the mm-hmm. permits because mm-hmm. I know those things aren't really allowed anymore. But mm-hmm. that would be epic. November. Yeah. Why can't we do that? Is that something we can do? I don't what, know. Just, have you seen it before? Has that happened? There's no. the there's the there's the sunset uh, sessions. Yeah, and we even with our Cape Talk family, mm. we do the beach shows every now and then. Okay. It's yeah. Clifton, Clifton. Mm. That's where I want to see yeah. those campfires. You just want to have a big stage, like on like in the UK, they have that festival Tunes in the Dunes, and mm. it's like in Cornwall, and it's on the beach, and this mm. massive stage, and you all look out at the ocean, yeah. and the sunset, and the band playing. And the Oaks bring their boats, and they hover there in How the water we as well. How do not have that, oh, I don't know. It's what we deserve. We should be doing that. We'll speak to Alan Windy. Okay, I'm going to phone him. Make it happen. <laughs> please phone him and say, hi, it's Jeremy Loops. No, Alan, come on, man. <laughs> Uncle Al, please, sir, please. Just one in November. One in November. Yeah. Um, okay. Listen, we've got some uh, uh, comment here about your song. Mm, let's go. Bring it on. What a beautiful song. Well done, Jeremy. That is definitely going to number one. Love it! Woo! Oh my goodness, we love this. Neither of my kids will get out the car at school. We love this <laughs> song so much. 45 seconds in and I'm loving it. Yes. Well done, Jeremy. Lekker, lekker tune. 45 seconds there and that song started off on a very good note. Love it, love it, love it. Oh yeah, what a song. I'm definitely going to the top. Good job, Jeremy. Gotta agree with Darren. This is gonna be a hit. Future wedding songs. <laughs> I love this so much. I'm having goosebumps. Whoa, people send all these now. Jeremy, go Jeremy! You know what I mean? I understand, Darren. I understand. I didn't even need Jeremy to play more. <laughs> the people love it. Yes. Yo. I can't believe they all sent that in like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, I can tell you, that's just a little portion of what has been sent really? in. That's, the, that's a little bit that we have time together. Oh, that made my morning. But you now know I'm what? feeling better. But Jeremy, you're, you're an awesome guy, and I uh, wish you all the best of success. Thank you. Internationally. Hey, we're gonna, it's going to happen. I mean, I've just been, you know, um, in that song with Ladysmith, this time there's a line in there that says... Um, and it's not written in the star and it's not written in the stars but i got patience mm. and i'll tell my story even if it breaks me because the city has my heart and i've been waiting and that's a it was a real that line was written straight from the heart like nothing's been written in the stars for for me on this journey it's like some things have worked and so many things ha- haven't worked and it's been the putting one foot in front of the other every day and being willing to try again and just get knocked down. And I've just got used to being knocked down. And we've had loads of wins. And from the outside, it looks like we've just had wins, but we have not had just wins. And I've got to a point now in my career where I've got no expectations. I'm like, uh, I've got patience now. Mm. And eventually the moments are gonna like collide. And it might be on the song. This might be the one that changes the game for us. And it might not. But we're gonna we're gonna keep making music. We're gonna get there, and it's um it's a lovely feeling to have come to peace with that process of. Uh, Where do you get all this from? Smoking spliff. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> it must be some really good. The good <laughs> stuff. Barefoot and fish. You are so zen. I None of us day, Mister Lewis. I can imagine you and Ed barefoot there. <laughs> oh, this is some stuff I brought from South Africa, Ed. This will turn your hair blonde, Ed. <laughs> you know he's got that uh, that like bar bar and pub on his like property as well. So like yeah. you go, we finish writing, and then you go like downstairs, <laughs> and you put on like a biker jacket, and you go back up through this other like trap door and it opens up into his own bar mm. where he's got all of his own like home brewed well it's not home brewed <laughs> I think it's like all these brewed lagers and IPAs um, it, yeah, it's, it's a fun life no, yeah. um, no, what, what a completely normal story next time I come in here yeah, I'll bring bring all the, the treats for you guys yeah. <laughs> seems like seems like there's a need or a want <laughs> we can put it on our uh, will of joy prize <laughs>
Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give me now, Rustas. <laughs> There we go. Let's, yeah, man. let's set the mood, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Jeremy? I'm going to break a, a major rule of radio Ooh. right here. Oh, I like breaking rules. Let's go. Um, because uh, for me, there's a saying, if it's nice... You might as well play it twice. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's hey, double up. Never before has the same song been played back to back on the radio. I'm going to do that right now. Jeremy Loop, second time around. If you missed it, this is going to be a future number one. Jeremy, thanks for joining us today, oh, my I man. See so you much. on the stage. Beautiful. The what a special shows. interview. Thank you for making my morning. It's a peace, love, and namaste. <laughs> <laughs> Music. To make you feel great. Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. KFM mornings with Darren, Shirley, and Sid. Monday to Friday, 6 to 9 a.m.